I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As you can see, we got uh, quite a bit on the agenda to do tonight, so we're going to be moving it right along real quick. We're going to start with the roll call of trustees, Barb. All right, uh, Lola Brown. Here. Brandon. Here. Jason. Here. Dave. Here. Jeff Rubin. Here. Joe Here. Okay, all of them are here. Um, now we will have uh, Jeff Rubin with the second uh, reading of the ordinance to adopt the anti blight commercial zone areas, please. Okay, uh, this will be the second reading of an ordinance to adopt Article uh, what is it, 7 uh, anti blight regulations, commercially zoned areas, Code of Ordinances, Village of Ugly, Michigan. Uh, this will be available to the public if uh, they so choose to want to read it. Okay, is there anybody that have public comments on the agenda items? No? Nope. Okay. Um, at this time, I uh, want to uh, take a couple updates. We're first, we'll start with here in County Economic Development. Carl Asentowski, you're on deck first. Um. You're welcome to come up front if you'd like. Sure. Do I only have three minutes or do I have like No, you have one year, longer than that. No, you're, no, not, no, you're, not, you're, not, you're not on People the public comments. People who know comments. me know how much I can talk. <laughs> Maybe I'll give you three. <laughs> <laughs> um, three minutes is perfect. Um, I'd like to thank the council uh, for allowing me to come in. And I was talking to Susan about opportunities that we work with on a regular basis. And because of the number of new council members, we thought um, it would be a good idea for me to kind of stick my head in, talk to the council just very briefly. Um, I can talk for a long time about economic development, how approaches, different strategies, those type of things. Rather than do that, I just want to introduce myself. Um, Susan's got my contact information. We do um, economic development slightly differently than other communities do and other regions do. A lot of times uh, EDCs will go into a community and say, I know what's best for you. So I'm going to tell Ubley what's best for Ubley. I learned a long time ago that doesn't work. Um, so our strategy is, is to listen to the community, is to come into the community. I try to look at your master plan, your recreation plans, uh, committee discussions. Uh, we've done a lot of work in the village of Seaboyne and doing uh, planning over there. And to give you an example of some of the interesting things we get involved in, um, they wanted to know how to energize their downtown area. So what we did was we, we started looking around, doing some research on what was some ideas for downtown development, and we said they don't use their river. I mean, it just kind of goes through there and people ignore it. So our solution was, was to set the river on fire. And we did. Um, it's called a river fire. They do it every October. And what we did was we actually stole the idea from Providence, Rhode Island, where they have cauldrons in the middle of the marina. They set them on fire uh, periodically, and it generates huge crowds. So our solution was is to come up with a very inexpensive way to do the same thing in Seaboom down the river. They constructed, I think, six uh, cauldrons, floated them out on a pontoon boat, filled them with wood, and set them on fire. The way they're designed, nothing drops into the river so we can't you know the dnr is not going to tell us that you know we're polluting the river or anything else so it's to take those kinds of concepts and those ideas and put them into our local communities because when I, this, this afternoon i can't i googled great places to live and the google search came up with 15.3 million hits so we're competing with the village of ubley is competing with 15 million other folks that are out there saying we have a great place to live. So the challenges and kind of the challenge for the communities are how do you become in an even better place to live? How do you create energy within the community? Um, we do work in Croswell, we do work in Harbor Beach, we work at any place that we're invited. If the community says no, nope, we're good, and there are communities out there that say that. They have city managers, the city managers are very comfortable doing what they do. And that's okay. I mean, and what we try to do, and what I've done with, with Ubley, is to let folks know of opportunities. So there's an uh, art grant out there that's floating around. I think it's due next week. Uh, if the community's interested in applying, 
we can sit down and work, th work through that process. If not, that's okay because it's not going to work all the time. We work on recreation planning. We work uh, with communities on implementing those impl uh, recreation plans either with state grants or with just community volunteers. I mean, we've done some interesting things. I live up in Port Austin and we painted crosswalks. And that seems to get people kind of excited uh, in a couple different ways. Um, but it's something that keeps coming back. I was at a meeting a couple weeks ago up in Port Austin and they said, crosswalks has, haven't been painted in two years. When's that going to happen? Said, when your community volunteers can step up to the table. So there's opportunities out there to, kind of, to differentiate yourself, to create um, energy in the community. So that's a part of my job. I'm not going to come in and say, you know, this is what others should be doing. Talking with the council and committees and whoever else might want to be involved is to look at how we can help steer some of those efforts. We can bring in resources, we can bring in ideas, and, but it's up to the community itself to work with us in implementing. Um, a great example, I think it was just um, put on Facebook yesterday, was the exercise place up in Port Austin. Um, group of community uh, members saw something in Costa Rica and it was outdoor exercise equipment year-round um, they said they called me and said Carl we want to do this so we sat down I was not the leader these folks um, took charge of it but what we did was we said you may want to check here or you may want to check there on funding resources and those kind of things they organized it they made all the contacts they ordered the equipment, hired the contractors, and they just unveiled it. I think the official ribbon cutting is next week. So it's those kinds of things that we can play a role in. It's not going to be that I'm going to be in front leading. I'll be at the back putting in whatever resources we can. Um, we work in manufacturing, in agriculture, uh, tourism. So it's not um, because that reflects the communities we work in. And I work in both Sanilac and Huron County. So We've got some really diverse communities out there. So I'm not going to extend this out. Um, that's over three minutes, I know. <laughs> sorry, sorry, everyone. Uh, but I'm more than happy to come You know, meet with the council when it's less busy, uh, or with committee members, or just community members that want to um, see how we can energize different parts of the community. In the email that I sent you, Jeff Rubin is our liaison. Jeff, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Carl, we and everybody else um, uh, on the council. I would like to just give you a quick background. Um, Carl was born and raised here, and Carl used to sit in these seats um, right there uh, several times and had to make some of the decisions like yes. we're making right now, too. So he does have at heart ugly in the background mm -hmm. if we ever want it. Um, he also has another person on his board, um, Lynette Drake, who was Bill Roberts' daughter, who was very, very great for this community. and. I know she always puts a fire behind, she nudges uh, me all behind the time. Carl to remind us <laughs> to, you know, what's available for us Absolutely. because she sees other things going on and wants us to see things going on. So mm -hmm. um, we appreciate your time. No problem. And you know we got a lot tonight, and yep. uh, we'll probably have you back another night if we've got some questions. Okay, thank Definitely. you very much for coming. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Normally we would um, go right into the approval of the consent agendas, but I would like to switch this around. I'd like to make an addition to the agenda or move the agendas around first. Um, I would like to move up the um, flower pot agenda. Um, we have the FFA girls here with us. We don't want to keep them out here very late. And the other thing uh, on, is on number D, on our unfinished business, um, should be the job descriptions. And I left that off by accident, but I would like a motion to move that to the July meetings. I think that would give us a little bit more time to review all the job descriptions. Um, we're still waiting to get one back uh, for the police the police officer description. And of course, we have a lot on our plate just through going over the interviews that we have. So um, that would be moved. Um, what else do we have to change? So if we can get a motion to do that. Number six. Oh. Under new business, Carl. Yeah, oh, no, oh, that's right. Under number six, under new business, that would be a Carl Weber contract. So I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, make those additions and corrections at this time. 
Uh, I'll make a motion that we <coughs> add them items to our agenda. We second that motion. It's been moved by Jason, seconded by Brandon, that uh, we make the corrections and additions to the uh, agenda. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. I'm not nervous because of a crowd. I'm more nervous having the three FFA teams sitting over here with state parliamentarians on it. <laughs> they make me more nervous than the rest of them. Okay, um, at this time then we have two that are not on the schedule. Um, I believe her name is Stacy Lopez from Region 7 Area, on Agents, Area Agency on Aging. Mm -hmm. If you'd like to step up here for a few minutes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start uh, real quick. I'm Hank Whitenburner. I'm your representative from Huron County to the Region 7 Area Agency on Aging. I was a commissioner for 10 years. Uh, Carol, that's the longest three minutes of my life. Thank you. Uh, what on my responsibility, Rich Schwartz and Grover back there, Rich, raise your hand. He's on the advisory council for Region 7. I'm the secretary on the board of directors. Uh, we're here to support Stacy, who's going to give a program on uh, the uh, Medicare waiver program, which benefits the seniors, uh, and we're very interested in benefiting the seniors of your agency here, or of your area here, rather. Uh, our agency spent over a million dollars in Huron County last year. Uh, our responsibility, mine and Rich's, is to make sure that about $270,000 of that is spent uh, for congregate meals and home delivered meals and daycare and things like that. So I'm gonna let Stacy take over. I don't wanna take any more of your time. So I apologize I didn't get on the agenda. So I'm gonna be really super quick. Cause, um, so I left a packet with each of you that talks about historian. And uh, I just want to enter into another big, I need to have a motion from the board that we accept that uh, their responsibilities from here on out and that we will give them um, we have not used any of our money yet, so we have $1,600 that we will write a check to them and let them do that, and they will, of course, keep track of what they spend it on and what they don't, and if any carries over. So I would entertain a motion on that, if anybody sees that's a great idea or not. Motion for the FFA to take over the fiber products. I have a second. I'll second. I have a motion by Gabe Turner, seconded by Joe Cotting, to allow the other FFA taking over the care and planting of our flower pots. Any discussion? Uh, the only discussion I got, I guess, is the, uh, the money. To, uh, are you sh you're positive that who do we write the check to? And is it, you know what I mean? Okay. I mean, I think probably before we just bought them and we paid the receipt. Yeah. So we're right. just, we need the amount of money we're giving them in this motion. Um, I think we should just put the amount of money that's allowed in there. And then we can go from how it works best for so them. So 1600 is Right, that's what's in our budget. So for I would it. add that to your motion then. Okay. So it's, you right, know, we'll put the everybody knows what that. they're paying. Mm -hmm. so. And what we will do is we'll work out best for the school, whether it's for them to purchase it and then turn in the receipt or whether they'll need that, you know, ahead of time. Um, and we'll work that out with, yeah, with the school on which way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think the school will do that. I'm talking to Melissa. She was... Um, which is their advisor, Mrs. Kramer. She was agreeable to whatever way we decided to do it. Um, so. Well, would it be better that they provide the receipt and our treasurer pays them? I think she was going to see which was going to be easier because when they order the bulbs in the fall, they're going to have to pay that bill. So they'll know ahead of time what bulbs they want to order, if I'm correct on your program. Jump in here if I'm not. But they'll pick out what bulbs, and we'll know what. But for this year, mm -hmm. since we're so far behind, we do have the geraniums, which we don't know their status, but they are up in the in the storage set. I don't know if Sue knows. I know Carl picked them up. Nobody knows if they've been watered or not or anything. So they'll have those already to work with. But for this year, they don't have anything to work with because they had sold all their flats and everything when we made this. So they will need some money this year, right now, to be able to get some extra flowers from somewhere to, to, to uh, make them look nice now. And if my understanding is correct, they're not going to put all of them out. They're only going to do a few along Main Street instead of as many as we had since they're starting behind the, behind the season. Normally they'd have them out before Memorial Day. The plugs would all be growing. How many are there? Do we know? Sue, can you jump in there and tell me how many there normally is? I think we put about 30 out. Right. Yeah. And I think we're going to try to shoot for half of that just because we're behind the eight ball on this and getting it started. So they would need money to work with this year. I don't 
believing so, when he was on so we could we could they just turned the receipts in but the cap is 1600 bucks right. okay yeah that's yep. i'm fine that's what you're not giving yep. them the 1600 yeah. yeah. nope. them to yeah right. that's what i was giving them first until jason brought well, well that's what yeah. i mean yeah i just mean, yeah. just want to make sure we're yeah. Square. Yeah. 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 yeah we were going to just hand uh Right, so yeah, here's your 1600 no, yeah, more shopping. No. <laughs> that <laughs> is the limit. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> limit is. Yes. So if you do 15 of those in this year, it's a hundred bucks a pop. Right, so that's, if you figure, like, I don't know if you heard what Brandon said. Brandon said if we do 15 of those this year, that's a hundred bucks a pop. Basically, that they got to work with where normally it probably wouldn't cost that because they'll be growing more. And I don't even yeah. know so if it'll cost that much. I was going to say, that's a lot yeah. of flowers yeah. for a hundred dollars. It'll cost that much. But, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. And, yeah, and they grow. I'm good. Right. So. And they grow. So um, the, the motion that we have on the table is that we allow the ugly FFA to take over the um, uh, pots and the growing of it with a cap on the spending of $1,600. Um, starting this year, it will be uh, available right now. And then from there on, we'll let them allow the plugs to grow and we'll work out how we pay the bill with them and what works best for the school finance officer. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Let's enter into an official group with you guys. Thank you very much. You got your flash on there. They wanted to get a group picture, so guys, you can get a group picture here. I'd also like to, on behalf of the council, Carl, I would like to thank you guys and the Planning Commission for all the work you guys done with the recreation plan and to get the master plan together like you have. Um, you guys put in a lot of time and, and effort um, and under that note of time and effort, um, as you know, we could not give them the budget bucks, the ugly bucks that we used to give anymore. That was not legal. Um, and in doing some discussion and a little bit of discussion with Jason, we were under the understanding that they could be paid um, some type of fee uh, as a planning commission. So I contacted MML this morning after talking with um, Jim, and we went through the zoning, and he gave me a copy that they are able to be paid under a commission for their meetings. We have to set the schedule of what they would be paid them. Um, so I don't know if we necessarily want to do it at this meeting. Um, my thoughts on it were, you know, a minimum of $25 per meeting. Uh, normally they don't have as heavy a schedule as they've had the last two years. We cannot go back more than our um, start of our fiscal year. So if we wanted to help them out, we couldn't go back and say, hey, you've been doing all this extra work but we can go back from the start of our fiscal year for the meetings that they have held. Um, we also can, when we make our fee schedule for meetings, we can make sure that that's in there. So say we give them $25 per meeting, then when we have to have a special meeting like they did last night, Mr. Selig would know that it would cost them you know, that much money for this meeting, plus whatever it costs to send out the notices and all that would be billed incorporated. But, um, I'm wondering your thoughts, or if you want to think about this till next meeting and table it. But I was thinking, twenty-five dollars a meeting. They have um, four people on the committee, right? Five. Five. So that's uh, one hundred twenty-five dollars, correct? Um, that would cost them a month for a meeting, or cost us. Um, and then I think we can figure that out. We should be able to cover that. Um, but if you want to think about it, we can, or if you want to entertain a motion on it, we can. It's up to you. It can be tabled. It can be either or. Susan, if I could add to that. You sure can. Uh, the, the Planning Commission does not regularly meet every month. Uh, they are required by the zoning ordinance to meet quarterly at the very least. Okay? So uh, it's been a busy year for the Planning Commission because of the master and, and rec plan. But Normally, the Planning Commission would not be meeting every month like they have been. And I think since, and this is my opinion only, since we haven't been able to, you know, we give them these $25 public bucks, which <laughs> kind of limited right now that you can spend that, but they appreciated it, and we appreciated what we did. But like you said, <coughs> and I'm glad you mentioned that, because when I did look it up, I saw that it was quarterly, and I forgot. Um, but if you want to, I'll entertain a motion if you want to lay it over. We'll see why we put it on. You okay. better do it. I, I move good. that we uh, pay the Planning Commission five people uh, $25 a meeting. Okay. Go ahead and second to that motion. I'll second it. It's been moved by Lola, seconded by Jason, that we uh, allow our Planning Commission to be paid $25 
per meeting, um, per person, per, person, per meeting. Um, is there any discussion on that? So are we going to prorate back from here, catch I'm, them up? That's what I'm wondering. Or if you are we going from here on out? Or that's up for you guys to discuss. We can only go, to, we can only go back to the beginning of our fiscal right. year, which is March. March. So we, from March so on, they can only get paid once a year, so right. I'm fine with that. Yeah, we'll we'll catch them up. I think so, because I mean, they really were busy last year. You know what they did? Yeah. So I'll add that to the motion. So I'll amend the motion to say that uh, we will pay per meeting, per per, per planning committee member, $25. Pro rate or retroactive to the start of the Village of Ugly's fiscal year. And that's March. And that yep. was March. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carried. More checks for you guys to write. I'll, I'll kind of, or what you get with Jim and make sure how many meetings they've had. Right. And, and, you, and you've got, they'll it. get paid on the same schedule that we do. It'll yeah. be at the end of the year, Jim, just like we do with yeah. uh, all that good stuff. Okay. She may need some paperwork from you guys too because I think they'll get 1099 too. Or they'll get the taxes taken out the same yeah. as my understanding. Yeah. Okay. Um, Parks and Recs, Mr. Turner. A letter from Bonnie with the uh, Farmer's Market. To the Village of Ubley, on behalf of the Ubley Community Club, we would like to extend a heartfelt thanks for allowing us the opportunity to serve the community. The farmer's market is underway and, as you know, has been doing very well for the first two weeks of operation. I truly believe that the market will only become better with each Saturday it takes place. I have had many people comment on how happy they are for this opportunity that it was brought forth by the community club. The vendors are very happy with the turnout from the community as well, and they would like me to bring it to the village that the homecoming com and to the homecoming committee to see if they could find us a spot where we were able to still set up during the homecoming, even if it has to take place on Sunday. But that would, <clears throat> but that it would be a good opportunity for them as well, and they believe it would be appreciated by the community. With that being said, I ask you to keep in mind and please let me know your thoughts on this matter. The first week we had nine vendors and the following week we had the same. A few that were not able to make it due to other obligations will be back with the projected outcome this week to be between 15 to 20 vendors. I also am looking into the Project Fresh so that the senior citizens and others may be able to use these coupons for produce. I think that will again be a big benefit. Again, thank you for allowing this to take place, and I look forward to coming to the next meeting and sharing more about how the season is going. Warm regards, Bonnie. I did, I did have a couple people ask if they could um, and why we weren't doing it, and they said, you know, they just had to be authorization, but um, all we have to do is give them the okay. We're really not in charge of the homecoming. Her husband's in charge of the homecoming. <laughs> Steve's not here. Yeah, Steve's not here. But um, I feel, this is my opinion, I think it's a great idea. I mean, we opened it up to vendors. We set it up for vendors um, a couple years ago to have vendors come in for crafts. And there was only three or four of them. I think there's plenty of room. Um, of course, they won't be able to be on the tennis court like they are now because that comes into the beer tent. But I think in the parking lot where the vendors, which it's already set up. Well, I think that so. they actually had talked about just putting it on the grass. So right. Along the edge of the parking lot. Okay. Yep. You know? yep. So then, you know, on the far right. edge. And uh, I think it would be a good addition. There's some slow should. times there at the homecoming. That, uh, well, Sunday's always packed for the chicken dinner. And, right. Chicken dinner and everything, so more people will get there yeah. to see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. so they're already there, so. They just wanted to just give me a motion motion for allowing her and I'll make a motion to allow the farmers market to set up during the ugly homecoming. I will second that motion. I have a motion by Gabe seconded by Brandon to go ahead and allow the farmers market to set up uh, during the ugly homecoming whatever they work out with the homecoming committee. Any discussion? Those opposed? Are those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Motion carried. <laughs> Sorry. Any other thing I currently have is the uh, movies in the park. Um, unfortunately, Tracy Foster is not going to be able to do anything with it this year, so you have to kind of throw everything together and have it back up and running. Oh yeah, and I, I'm pretty much sure Gabe's 
Bill and I used to both work on it, and even Barb, and we've, every year we've seen to make the movies in the park get a little bit better. Um, you know, Barb had the initiative and got it going, and then, low, and then I had it, and we added not only just water and popcorn for free for the kids, then we had gotten $75, and then we were able to buy candy bars so that we each had something extra each time. Um, then one time we actually had uh, North Star Bank come in, and they brought a few goodies and gadgets, and knowing Gabe and them, some of the ideas that we've thrown around and discussed is maybe getting somebody that sponsors them, say, to come in North Star and say an hour, come in with inflatable, one inflatable for an hour or something beforehand until it gets dark or something like that, just to make it more of a family night to bring everybody in because one of the complaints is we have to wait so late till it's dark enough to show the movie. So um, yeah, I think you'll do a good job on it. spray it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else on it? Yep. Other than I appreciate all the input Barb's been giving me so far on the movies in part. Um, that's been really nice because I'm kind of going into a blind line here. Okay. Uh, the other thing I have, and I think we discussed this, was the uh, walking trail, the Boy Scout one that they created. Uh, Boy Scout walking prepared. trail, yes. Um, you know, the trees and such that are down, and I had spoke to Jason, he's going to bring it up for the scouts. Yeah. So, yeah. To, to bring everybody up to date, um, Stephen, was it Stephen? Daniel. Daniel Witkowski, um, his part was an Eagle Scout, and part of his project as an Eagle Scout was to make a walking path on part of the village property out on the farm. And it's a nice little walking path, but due to the high winds and the storms we've had in the last four months, there's trees down all over. I mean, it's impassable, it's inwalkable. Um, so I had mentioned it to Gabe, and Gabe walks a lot with his family. He was out there. Of course, Jason's active with the Boy Scouts. So they're looking to, to work maybe with the Boy Scouts to get out there with the chainsaws, and maybe even some of us or some of the volunteers from the community. But they're going to touch base on that so we can get that cleaned back up and maybe stack the wood out there and let the Boy Scouts put it for sale, and they can make a little bit of money. With the, with the cut up wood down there and it can get back open to be Was there somebody walking. that was uh, buying the wood from uh, the farm out there? Or that's, Jim, that's Jim Krzyzewski has the contract. Yeah. Um, he signed that. We set it up with Dave when Dave was here and I came across that contract but I have not seen him working out there and that is for the southern yeah. portion. I wonder the if month you have any Park. interest in doing some of that. So, um, we could, we might. That's a lot of work for them but yeah, it could be. Well, but we do have to check with Jim to see yeah, if she's sure. doing that. So that just brings you up on that. Anything else? I don't think there's anything else. No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rubin. Right, first of all, I mean, uh, July 30th is a Monday. So the third is July or the second is a Thursday. Or Wednesday before it comes to Wednesday the first, yeah. What's well, August 1st? Wednesday. Wednesday. Does that work for everybody? Wednesday the first well, or Wednesday. Is that Lady's Day out there? But I think they'd have enough room for us in that big big room. Well, there'd be less days. people sitting around after golf, but I mean the problem with Tuesdays out there is everybody's just trying to play right. Zucker till midnight, so yeah, right. not gonna happen. So Tuesdays is out, so we're down to a Monday or a Wednesday. July thirtieth out of Monday or Wednesday in the middle of the week. What's the seventh? Seventh is a Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, the eighth is a Wednesday. So it's either the 30th, the 30th, 1st, or 8th? 30th, the 1st, I would say. If you were going to travel a long way to come up to the thumb, or us going to St. Joe, what would be a better, better day for you? Coming off a weekend or in the middle of the week? That's what you got to think about. And how I'm many coming off the weekend, it's usually by the time I'm done on the Monday, I just want to go to sleep. So I'm thinking maybe, <laughs> I'm thinking the middle of the week. I think you're more apt to get people to come from other areas in the middle of the week because you come back from the weekend, and you want to catch up on your work and get going more in the middle of the week, I think I'd be able to get some time off to head up the train. I would say set the tentative date for one of those days and then double yeah. check with the hikes. Yeah. Just yeah. in case they don't have a turn next. I think first those or the eighth. I'd say yeah. the, fir the first with an alternate date being the eighth. Okay. I'll, I'll, that I'll entertain a motion on that. Yeah, I'll say. No. I'll, I'll, make, that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion that we. Uh, Check, we'll check with the height we get MML up here August 1st or August 8th. Yep. That's been motion. moved by um, Jason, seconded by Brandon, that we schedule the uh, All Everything In meeting training session with MML uh, Wednesday, August 1st, uh, up at the Ugly Heights with an alter alternate date of August 8th. Um, charging fees and things like that we'll leave up to Mr. Rubin. Yeah. 
um, and MML. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. Anything else? I'll do it for today. Do you have a presentation? No. Okay. We'll wait and do that. Okay. What about? <laughs> I, I forgot to sit on my desk. Okay. So we'll put that on hold too. <laughs> right. Anyways, I'll, I'll let you know. Anyway, uh, I put together a mock t shirt for, for an ugly village council type polo. Oh. And I left it on my desk. He was looking to make one, and, and when I first talked about maybe we'd each buy our one, he threw out maybe you donate, and we went from there. But then I also suggested to him, we have no merchandise right. that says Village of Ugly with the Ugly logo. I mean, we have Ugly Bearcats, Ugly Bearcats, Ugly Bearcats. When you look at a lot of communities, people like to have things like we did in the Centennial Times, yeah. or we had the picture of... Uh, Soaring Eagle was made up at one time on them. We had ones that used to have the ugly water tower. Um, so I've got a couple people looking into different logos along with him to yep. see what we could come up with with maybe a logo for our letterhead and on our website and things like that. <laughs> so if any of you have any ideas, um, I did talk to the art uh, teacher up there. She's going to throw that out to the students and see what we can come up with. But anybody that wants to bring it in, if it's in the newsletter, we're going to put it on on Facebook just to come up with a logo. I'll shoot you guys some ideas uh, to see how you like them. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, water, Lola, anything? No. I'm just got it. <laughs> and welcome back to Lola, by the way. Most of you know she's been having some health issues. We're glad she's back. She's sick of reading everything and just have to hear it from reading. You know, we take her home a packet of stuff all the time, but we're glad she's back. Um, just to touch on hers, in your mailboxes, you saw the cost for water pipes and for the water meters water replacement. Um, at the last meeting Carl was at, he explained to us that we were no longer going to be able to get them at the price we were, the replacement price was going up. Um, so that's in there for you to look at. Um, when the auditors were here on Wednesday, um, I was in and out with them to meet. Jason wasn't able to get up there. One of the things that she recommended is we don't charge any extra for our water right now. We don't have a cost of living increase. We have nothing. So if one of our wells went right down right now and we had to fix that and we have to incorporate that cost to people getting our water, it could be a, a big amount that we would have to start adding to their bill. She recommends that we put a 2% raise on our water bill yearly or 2% on our average water bill, which most people is anywhere from, I believe, Lori left again. But Kelly can tell us what comes in. Well, uh, for a third, if you, um, the standby fee, like on $30, 2% would be like 60 cents a quarter. So we could do that every year to add 60 cents a quarter every year with a 2% raise. Or we can sit back and keep our fingers crossed that none of these go down and we have to turn around and make it $60 every quarter. Um, I think the advice she gave us is really good. Everybody that has a water system like ours or bigger does that and has higher percentages. But she says looking at our budget and what we have at 2% would be a perfect amount to start doing. And you don't have to wait a certain day to start doing it. Or we don't have to have it in our charter. We don't have to have it on our millage. We as a council have the authorization to be able to do that. So I'm throwing that out there for your discussion. You can think about it the next month if you want. Look at what it costs to replace just our meters. Um, and remind you that we are still paying on the water bond um, that we got to install these meters. So that's my two cents. Do you want to work on it tonight or you can leave it later? It's up to you. So are we coming up with a whole dollar amount to charge to everybody across the board, or are we going to do 2% on each individual bill? I think 2% on each individual bill, like Darcy recommended, mm -hmm. um, because that's that covers, there's some places that use a lot of water, and then there's others that don't. And I think if you come up with a flat rate, we're kind of punishing those that don't use very much water. Yes. So I'm, I'm just giving you... Using a whole lot of water lately. Oh, yeah, you, you just filled the yeah. pool and you just did some other stuff. I have a roommate that left the water tap dripping for two and a half weeks. I can hardly wait to see what I was thinking. I, I came home today and the water was running for the kids. What's your thought on that? Do you want to go ahead and have her start with a 2% increase? It doesn't have to be this quarter. We can wait and put it out and notice that it's coming so people can arrange to have the 
extra 60 cents to whatever they might have, or we can. I would say you need to put it on notice that okay. we're going to do this before we do it. Yeah, but yeah. so if we have, if we approve this tonight, then when the July goes out, they would have notice and they would start in the following quarter, which I think is a pretty fair deal. But again, I need to entertain a motion on that. Anybody? Jeff will make the motion that we do a 2% increase yearly on our water bill. 2% quarterly on our, well, it'll be yearly. 2% added. Do I have a second to that? I'll second it. Second it by Gabe. That we, the motion has been made by Jeff, second by Gabe, that we apply a 2% water rate increase. And only because it will get saved and offset future water slugs coming out of my noggin. Yeah, we're in a discussion now. Anybody else have a discussion on that? Jason, your thoughts? No, I, I agree. So, I mean, I see the cost, but you're not, you're not keeping up with them. Mm -hmm. no. You, you got a water it tower, it's going to need a paint job, that's $90,000. So. Joe, you're the water guy, you're your DPW backup guy. Jeff, you're the backup water guy. No, well, you're on the water grid. They, they uh, do it on your taxes, they give an example, right. like a 2%, so somebody will look at it, they won't figure it out themselves, right. they'll just... Look at that, and that'll be on there. I think that's a good suggestion, um, like how they did on the taxes when there was yeah. a two percent increase. We'll have Lori do that, <coughs> and you're on that, so you can tell her to put that on there. And we can actually. She snuck out. She just left. She, she wasn't going to be here at all, and I told her we had some stuff that, that and I didn't get a chance to meet with her. Um, any more discussion? So we'll have her put that that way. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried. And then Lola, you can get with her and we'll have a sample one go out to show what it'll be in this mailing. And she's going to attempt to get the mailing to go out a little bit later. Normally it would go out the first week of July. That is going to put us five days late for what the DEQ wants for the notification of our water thing. But I think we'll be fine because we want to get together with the homecoming committee and be able to mail out the information on what's going on to help them a little bit and put that flyer in there to help promote our homecoming and help her run it. You know, that helps our businesses and stuff too. So the notice will go up in the July one, but the increase won't start until the September one? Right. Then? Yeah. Yep. Or October one. Whichever one is. Let me know when you're caught up there, too. Chief Brophy, is that anything more than your report? Yeah. Um, so we've got a couple of uh, months ago that. I hate to bug you, but can you stand, please? <laughs> So a couple months ago, I started the property room uh, meet um, back in December. If you remember, back on McAllister Road, we had an incident out there where we arrested a gentleman. Uh, he's now serving prison time for an illegal marijuana grow operation and assault, uh, commit great violent hair and less than murder. Um, the prosecutor approved it, and I worked with the schools, and all the equipment from that illegal grow has been donated to the schools. They came and looked at it. They, there were four light systems that were fantastic that the school can't afford um, that we donated to the school. Uh, last Tuesday, uh, Stuart Kalaszewski came over and we loaded up and we gave him the fertilizer, the, the chemicals that we took, the lighting system, the fans, the air conditioners, the scales, the thermometers, uh, ballasters, uh, our ballasts, um, and just a ton of stuff. And the school was extremely grateful because they can't afford that stuff. And we were able to donate. We moved into the uh, uh, greenhouse and they're going to use it to, uh, you know, grow the plants and, and uh, work with that. So that took a lot, uh, that cleared a lot of stuff out of my property room. So that was a, that was a big thing to, uh, to get it out. So, well, I've been a pretty quiet month, as you see by the numbers. Uh, you know, relatively quiet uh, month, which was which was good. You want to touch it all on all the uh, blight stuff that you guys have been taking care of? I know poor Matt. Yeah, yeah, Matt, Matt, Matt took 22. 12, 12 complaints this week just on blight. Uh, the grass is starting to grow. Um, I talked to Susan about this. Uh, you know, normally some, we shouldn't have to go tell everybody two weeks ago to cut the grass. I mean, people should know you got to cut your grass. Yeah, I've got to cut mine. You know, they got to cut theirs. Mm -hmm. What we always did was we'd go over there, give them 14 days to cut it. And they'd cut it. On the 15th day, we'd back tell them they need to cut it again. Um, so what we're doing is now we're going over there and we're issuing tickets, um, the repeat offenders that we have to tell every year. And then, uh, you know, the, the, the first time offenders, we will issue a ticket to them and give them 14 days to 
clear up the problem, and if they do, then we'll dismiss the ticket. And if they don't, then they've got to they've got to pay the ticket. And that seems to be working uh, a lot better and get things cleaned up. So Matt took 12 plate complaints just this week. Um, we got a, somebody put up a pool. They didn't put fence up around it, so we're working on that issue. Um, and uh, different things like that. You know, we're still uh, still working on some of them, but I think this is getting a lot of them, a lot of them cleared up for us. Thank you. Thanks for what you guys do for us, too. All right. Uh, we're moving on to unfinished business. Um, we met with uh, the recreational passport grant. Um, she came up. Uh, Brandon got there just as she was just about done. Lindsay Ross is her name. Um, we showed her what we wanted to do. She felt that what she's going to do then after coming and looking at her pavilion and where we're going to put the walking path in and stuff like that, the fact that we only have one park, the fact that we've never gotten a grant, the fact that we're refixing the current structure are a lot of good points. She is going to send out to us where she thinks we fall right now in a rating. Maybe Stephen can help me out if I have anything wrong here. Mm -hmm. But um, then we get that copy of where she thinks we'll fall, and we can submit more if we think we need to move up higher in the rating. Um, but she really gave me a good positive feeling, and I think maybe Brandon agree that we have a really good chance at this. Yeah. Um, she had a lot of great things to say about Spicer, that Spicer usually don't throw their hat in with companies that they or communities that they don't think really deserve it. So um, that was another good thing. And then once we do that, we'll get another ranking back from them if we add anything to see where we're at. So they really try to help to, to boost us up where we can get nice and high and, and hopefully get this. And like I think Stephen told us one other time, they get a set amount of money from the DNR and they go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So wherever you fall, that's how much. So if you're asking for the, a big amount here, and we fall here, we get all ours, we get it. But if we fall at five or six, we may not get it. But uh, um, she was up at Harbor Beach, Port Austin, and Caseville. It's freezing cold up there, and I told her, see, it's nicer, warmer inland, that's why you need to come to here. But uh, do you have anything to add, Brandon? No, nope, we nope. covered it all. So that covers that. Do you have anything on that, Stephen? Any updates? No, nope. no, nope, we're just waiting, fingers crossed. So. Okay. Um, safe route to schools at this time. I'll ask Kelly Pierce, our treasurer, and Jason um, Rutkowski from Stephen Rutkowski from Spicer to uh, update us on our safe route to school uh, audit that we had. You guys can stand. What um, do you two would stand? The the uh, Friday before Memorial Day, we had our walking and walking audit and bike audit, and that's basically um, Spicer designs the routes that the kids all took to school. They collected information, who lives where from the school, how many kids walk and bike and all that. So we had routes outlined, and uh, if we went in pairs and, and walked and rode bikes to look for, you could say, obstacles where there are no sidewalks, uh, where the curbs, you know, don't have the handicap um, access, uh, anything that would prohibit the kids from uh, walking on a sidewalk and, and be safe. We looked at the lighting too, and uh, we looked at a lot of stuff. So, yeah, Adam from Safe Routes, he provided these <laughs> sheets um, basically to, to detail any defects and, uh, you know, you know, whether there was cracks in the sidewalk or whether there was no sidewalk or non-compliant ramps. And then we also took photos and basically uh, geo-referenced those photos on this map. And um, I broke up into five routes because I thought we could split into roughly five groups to basically cover the whole town. Um, really the next steps are, uh, I, I got some of the photos today so I'm going to be scanning all those in and, and once I get all the photos I'm going to compile all the information, submit it to Adam from the Safe Routes uh, program uh, for their records and then we need to get an action plan meeting set up hopefully sometime this summer, um, we're going to have to coordinate with with uh, the school because we need some representation from the school, and I know they're they're going to be off. So, I think we're still looking at trying to submit for fall for the application, and then the end goal is uh, there's uh, 400,000 available for lighting, sidewalk improvements, different things like that, um, and then also 16,000 for the school for educational stuff to raise awareness and you know health and fitness and that kind of stuff. Um, we're doing something very similar for the Village of Ashley. They got awarded their grant. I think they got like 380000 and 
they're looking at doing roughly a mile and a half of sidewalk. So you, there's a lot of stuff that we can do here. So. And I'd like to thank, thank this time to, the, I know it was hard for all of you guys to be able to make it right before the holiday and same, but we had a couple bikers that came, they wanted to ride their Harleys to do it, and the police chief and Jeff, but that wasn't the, quite the bikes they were looking for, but uh, Kelly and I pedaled, and uh, Gabe's wife showed up, and his kids, and they walked, and uh, it was kind of perfect, because school had just gotten out so that you could see the problems that we have with the kids getting picked up, and that issue we have now, and the speeds on Washington Street, and they timed it perfectly for some of them walking down uh, uh, Agnes Street, uh, where, where he doesn't have a sidewalk, but where there's a sidewalk that was needed, the kids were walking down the street in the picture. Well, that was on Murphy Street. And then Murphy. they turned and went down Murphy Street, so it worked out really well. But it really did enlighten, I think, some of us to, there is some repairs that really need to be done on a lot of things around on our curbs. You know, we used to be known as a community for having lots of good streets and curbs and gutters. and we got to get caught up to speed here and hopefully we'll get this grant and it'll be the boost that we need to to get this. Um, some people don't understand and this is the part we want to get out. It doesn't have to be just a kid that lives in town that will use these. We have kids that come over to practice football that have to walk from the school to the village park. We need to have good access for them. So it could be your grandson, it could be your niece, it could be your nephew, it could be your kid. It's not just for the kids in town. You know, it involves the out. So when they get these surveys from the school, Please fill them out. Encourage people to fill them out for us. Or they're kind Yeah, we even talked to, Adam talked about uh, one of the things you can do is you can set up basically what they call our drop zone. So, you know, if someone's coming from Minden City or Argyle or wherever, you know, they would drop their kid at the drop zone and then they'd walk, you know, a quarter of a mile, or wherever they walk, you know, a couple thousand right. people to school. So, so, and, and, so we're going to look at that option, you know, and that may help alleviate some of the issues with, you know, kind of the access in and out. You know, I don't know if we could put one of those on M19 or if we could put one of those kind of by the downtown area. Or, uh, so that's another thing that we are we're going to look at as, as well. With this, so. And again, thank you, Stephen, yep, for, thanks everyone. for all this. I don't know if you know, but Stephen's got his first baby coming just about any time here. Ooh. So every day that he talks to us, the first thing in the email is no baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, the trustee homecoming float. Are you guys want to do one? You want to hold off to next year? You tell me. I already got parade duties okay. for the last I say, years. So. I say let's let's <laughs> forgo it this year and next year, and if, if everybody's reelected or what we have, maybe we'll have a little bit more time to throw yeah, it together. Yes. Um, with with Carl's retirement and stuff, we've been pretty busy and with these grant things. So, but I would hope and ask that you guys do show up during the homecoming. Please make it aware to the people there that you are on the village council, and open to questions. Um, I know um, a bunch of us stopped down at the farmer's market and it's really encouraging when you get a chance to talk to the people and find out. Um, uh, I watched Gabe get stopped the other day and I got stopped and Kelly got stopped and it's been fun to, to do that and I, I just hope we see where we wear our polo shirts. That would be a good place to wear your polo shirts. Listen here. Oh, we know what to go up on the desk. Make sure you email me all your sizes. <laughs> Oh, dude. He brought the UQ as well. <laughs> which, which I already know, but thanks. And, um, and yeah, he's so making something to clerk and treasure. I think I thought they should have dollar oh, signs okay. or something. Yeah. I don't know. Everybody send me your sizes. I know a place where I can get this done for cheap. I, I really think across Kelly's, you should put Matthew, the tax collector, on the back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then put a dollars in the other. But. Yeah, but if you would, yeah, send me all your sizes. Give me your money. Um, yeah. We were supposed to have the job descriptions to go over, but we are carrying that over to our next meeting. Again. And Chief Rothy, yes. Yes. Um, I gave Victoria, before she left, a job description that we used when we hired Matt. And you guys... We can't find it. Don't she, have can't. It. she does can't not have it. it. All right. Um, I've, I've got it on... I've got, I heard you say it earlier. I've got that on the computer because we used it when we hired Matt. So I'll, right. I'll plus it off and get it to Barbie. Yeah. yeah. Just, just, if you could just email it to all of us. Okay. Would be easier. Then we can review it. And she said it to me. And it was for... It keeps opening it? up for the to the DPW supervisor yeah, job. Supervisor, you know, okay. So she... When she yeah, so I got that. So I got it for so I can just get that. Yeah, you yeah. email it to us so they can review it I for the next one. I take care of that tomorrow. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Okay, new business. This is what we've all been waiting for. And this poor gentleman sat here and waited and waited. Um, at this time, I guess I would like you to, if you have copies of the resumes, I'd like you to pull them out. And any of the notes from the minutes. 
Um, I will introduce, I would like to introduce, and, and please forgive me, Roger. Wid Widger. Widger. Um, I'd like to introduce to you and the community members, if you'd stand, this is Robert Widger. He was one of the three candidates that we narrowed it down to. Also, we have um, David Franzel. Our third one is Bruce Sweeney, but I do not see Bruce here tonight. And uh, they've been very cooperative. For those of you that didn't catch the meeting minutes that read, um, Brandon and Jason have been in charge of working on this. They put in numerous hours. Um, I'm very proud of the work that they did and what they gathered in such a short amount of time. Um, in the minutes that you guys probably didn't see yet, but we had 24 applicants, and they came from all over the state. Northern Muskegon, Fenton, Warren, Badex, Ugly, Harbor Beach, Duckerville, um, that general area, and it was it was a, a lot of work for them to narrow it down. And uh, these poor gentlemen, they have to go through an interview of seven people sitting there staring at you, the camera, and you know, things like that. So, um, what I'd like you to do um, to make this easier, and this was suggested by MML, is I'd like you to take your three resumes that you have and number them one, two, and three by your first, second, and third. And if we all happen to agree on the third being the one, the lowest, we can eliminate the third or the majority, and then we would only have to discuss on two, which would be much easier. So I'll give you a minute to look through those. Um, and mark your one, two, and threes. This has been a really, really, really tough decision to do. We have three really good choices. And to narrow them down has been yeah, tough for every one of them that we out of here. Um, I'm happy to say that the three of them that we narrowed it down to are all from with the, the here in the public area. Um, when you get applications from all over the state like that and find out that we have three of the three good guys for what we're looking for, and I mean they stuck out. It wasn't just oh we took them because they were local. Um, I think Jason and Brandon agree they were far above any of the applicants that we got. So um, and it's been tough. We've lost some sleep over this, I think. At this point, I'll entertain a motion to eliminate uh, Bruce Sweeney from contention. I just want to thank Bruce for applying. He was a good applicant. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. He's down. Now, what I'd like to do is have you guys read over your um, Bruce Sweeney, or uh, Roberts and Davids. And moved by Gabe, seconded by Lola that we select Dave Franzel. We've had a discussion. All those in favor of Dave Franzel? Aye. Raise your hand, please. Me. That's four. All those opposed? Aye. Okay. Having four votes, um, Dave Franzel, he will be our new DPW advisor. Um, Bob, I want to thank you very much. I hope that you know um, Carl's or uh, Virgil's talk of retirement in three years. I hope you will really seriously think about that for us because I think you would be a good fit in that position. And it is a very tough, a very tough, tough decision for both of us, or all of us. I think you can say that. Would you be willing to do it? And they said no. They asked a couple employees and they said no. So I called the so what I should do is talk to our retiring supervisor and say, listen, would you stay on until our new person is certified to be to operate the water? The test is November and in May. The DQ guy said they need three to four months of experience with the system. So realistically, we can get the November test and hit that and have a certified operator probably in the month of December. So I went to Carl, I said, Carl, this is what we gotta do. So we come up with a rate of $40 per hour. He'll get no benefits, he'll get no vacation time, no sick pay, no comp time. He'll work 24 hours total for the month of June, July, and August. After that date, he'll go to eight hours per month. Because our heavy water stuff is June, July, and August is why we've got the hours up. Once we hit November, our contract states that we have the right to end it. And the contract will run until June of next year. So at that point, Carl has the right and we have the right to renegotiate it. But if everything goes well, we'll be, we'll be done with him in November, or December, I should say, trying to get the test results. So, thank you. I guess if we do, we tell everybody that. 
Dave. When he when he was talking to DQ, we, we can get Dave possibly into the November classes. Yeah. For the water certification. There's online yeah, stuff. <coughs> Uh, if it's they like the experience is what that's basically what it boils down to. They want three months of him working with the system. So you know he, he don't have the license, but he can Carl will work with him and then Carl will take him like we take our water samples to Harbor Beach. So Carl's gonna introduce him to them people, show him the process and go from there. And, and the DQ guy said that's the best situation is you have somebody that was operating the system and that's what they like to see. So that's why we went this road. Cool. That'll give us ample time to get data trained into the classes and gun. So I'll entertain a motion to accept the contract um, that uh, Jason and um, Brandon have come up with with Carl. Make that motion. No, sorry. Motion by Jeff, seconded by uh, Gabe, that we accept the contract to uh, keep Carl Weber on as our water tester. Uh, any discussion? Further discussion on that? Those opposed, or those in four? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carried.